In this next video, we will look at the hip extension firing pattern sequence. And basically, this will test the firing order of the hamstrings and the glutes and also the lumbar spine erector. And you can also include it into the thoracic erector as well. Before we start, we need to make sure that the patient is in the, what I call the neutral position. Position number one is the legs. Try not to have the legs externally rotated or internally rotated because it'll either facilitate the gluteus maximus or will inhibit the gluteus maximus by the position of the leg. So try if you can, maybe a little bolster under the legs would be fine. The lumbar spine, if the patient is too lordotic, then you can use a pillow just to flatten the spine a little bit. The arms, the arms in this position, if one arm is up and one arm is down, then let's say the right arm is up and that will activate the latissimus, then that will co-contract with the posterior oblique sling and you might find it actually assists the contracture for the gluteus maximus on the opposite side. Also the neck in a neutral position, ideally using a face hole. If the head is to rotated to one side, then it will affect the function of the lumbar spine. When this test was taught to me, the patient is simply going to lift, let's say the left leg, an inch or two off the couch. When I was taught initially, I would use my finger on the hamstring, my thumb onto the glutes, and my thumb and finger onto the lumbar spine erector. However, because there is four bits of information coming back in, it is quite difficult to truly sense which one is going one, two, three, and four. The correct order would be hamstring and the gluteus. These should fire simultaneously. What that means is when the patient lifts a leg, they should go bang, bang together. Typically, you'll notice the hamstring is more dominant, so it tends to go one, then hopefully the glutes is very close in terms of the firing. Once we've analyzed this, this is known as sequence one, we can then analyze the lumbar spine for sequence two. And again, in the ideal situation, the opposite side, the contralateral erector, should fire before the ipsilateral erector. So in the sequence of four, it should be one, two, or one, two, three, four. And if you want to take it to another stage, then it would be the forico lumbar erector would be five on a contralateral side and then six onto the ipsilateral side. So the ideal sequence would be one, two, three, four, five, six. What we can do first of all is just simply look at sequence one, gluteus maximus and the hamstring. Let's lightly palpate, but before we, we touch, we look. What I'd like you to do please is when you're ready, can you lift your left leg an inch or two off the couch? Okay, and relax. From my perspective, it looks like it's hamstring then the glute. If you lift again, please. Good, and relax. Now, if I lightly palpate and lightly palpate, let's confirm that. When you're ready, can you lift? Okay, and relax down, good. And once more. Hamstring before the gluteus. So this is number one, and then this is number two. What we could do now is look at sequence number two. In sequence number two, it is probably easier just to expose the lumbar spine muscles. And if I just pull down this bottom close a little bit, and then again, before we touch, when we touch, we stimulate. The ideal situation would be this side would contract before this side. If we look to start with, can you lift your left leg again, please? And relax. Sometimes it's difficult to see which one because of the light, etc. If you slowly lift again, it does look like this side fires before this side, which would be an incorrect sequence. I can either place my thumbs like this, yeah, or I can place my thumbs like this. If I do it this way, so one thumb, so find the PSIS, come up onto round L5 and come across. It doesn't matter if you're on L5 or 4. 4 would be roughly in line with the, the crest or the iliac here. So lightly palpate, don't press too hard, lightly palpate, and then slowly ask your patient to lift the left leg, and it's definitely this side before this side. If I show you that one again and again. So this goes just before this side. Ideally, it should be this before this. So what we've got now is that we've got this sequence of two, so the ipsilateral fires before the contralateral. So this is one, this is two, this is one, this is two. So what we do now, we'll try to look at the, the final sequence and try to put them all together. So we know this is one, and then this is one, okay, one of this sequence, one of this sequence, so I'll lightly palpate, and what I want you to do is slowly lift your leg, please. Okay, and relax. That felt like it's the lower back to me. And again, and relax. We almost have to do it two, three, four times. Relax, let me, and again. 
hamstring. So hamstring goes just before this spine, the erector spine. So this is one, this is probably two. Let me just check on this one and the, the glute and lift please. Okay, this is three and then this is four. So what we've got, we've got hamstring, which is number one. We've got the erector spinae on the same side, which is number two. So it's one, two, and then we've got contralateral erector, three, and then the gluteus maximus is number four. So that tells me that the glutes is misfiring in, in its sequence because these two should fire together. So when the, the patient is lifting their leg, the hamstring and the ipsilateral erector will extend. And that tells me that the hamstrings can develop shortness, tightness, and potentially become torn. And the same for the lumbar spine erector. So when a patient has lower back ache, it might well be that because the glute is not allowing the hip extension, the lower back is actually doing most of the work. It's not as straightforward as, as you think to try to activate the glute. We need to try to look at why the glutes are not working in the first place. And it could be many, many reasons. And we'll discuss that in another video.